Hello! I know this is a bit different from what we usually do, but I want to give this video a try. It's from... Hello! Inferno Plus, which I've actually seen some of their videos, which I haven't had a chance to see this one, so I want to give it a try. You probably won't to see this until it's probably very many days since this video was released, but, um... Hello! I'm alive. So are you. We're all alive. Yay. Are we really, though, Chrono? You have no idea if I actually exist or not, or if I'm a figment of your imagination. Oh god, am I going crazy? Are you just one of the voices in my head? Maybe. Oh, Chrono, god. you need to go do the dishes. Oh, no. no! Dishes are low IQ. <laughs> <laughs> like that joke for yourself, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> for those who don't know, no. he is kidding. He, he does do this. I am kidding. Sometimes. Actually, all the time. Oh. I, I'm back? Hello. <laughs> I am so oh, back. Hi. Welcome back. Where am I back at, exactly? Hmm. That's a good question. Hmm. Oh, it looks like today's mod is about very large, floaty boys. And if you are currently wondering how this is possible, and that was the <laughs> floating boy, and that was the thumbnail right there that he just made. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Halo 3's 15-year-old game engine. Well, Wait, you. We'll get into that. Eldritch how did you get these boats to work? Eldritch nightmare. That's what I want to know. First, let me show you guys what Halo 3 Pimps at Sea is all about. Pimps at Sea. The scenario starts out with uh. the boys being deployed on a hostile covenant-controlled island. With the sole objective of okay. finding a mythical hidden treasure somewhere in the area. Wait, 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 wait. Is this... This isn't a multiplayer map. This is just a mission, like, for a campaign mission. What the hell? Yeah. I he, guess this is like a uh, co-op uh, campaign mission. He made his own campaign mission? That's actually kind of cool, though. I didn't know you could... Well, he's obviously messing around with the engine, so he did it that way because yeah. you can't make this kind of thing in Forge, but yeah. You then end up commandeering a large ship and sailing around the nearby islands, picking up clues and fighting can, off... Can you demons. use the cannons? Obviously, this mod is intended to be somewhat satirical, but yeah. I did my best to make it both look and play just as good as the base game campaign missions. And in order ah. to make that happen, I once again had to call upon the man himself, the oh. vocal butcher... To voice Sergeant Johnson. Yo ho ho and a boatload of guns. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Yo ho oh ho and a boat of guns. Don't get me wrong, I oh, yeah. love Sergeant Johnson. Everyone loves Sergeant Johnson. We had a rock, and sure. And then we had to share the rock. <laughs> we also have Luxor rock and, and a piece of string. Dave and David the Marines, respectively. And if you can't stand my godforsaken voice acting, which I do not blame you for, you are- That's how I, that's how every voice actor feels about them. Well, True. most most do. Including myself, when I had to do a little bit of voice acting for my comic video, which you can probably check on. Anyway. Free to blow me up with yeah. one of the ship's cannons. Oh. Oh, when did that get? There are actually quite <laughs> a few new things to play around with. Even put the Halo 3 death sound in there. Yeah. Oh my god, he, cool. he made warthog boats. We have boat hogs, Hell yeah. deployable man cannons, and even amphibious ghosts. Wow. So, um, why can't normal ghosts float on water? That and is interesting. Gravity, shouldn't that the mod also has a climactic <laughs> boss battle between a pirate ship and a covenant scarab. Oh which my might god. Just be the most gratuitous thing I have ever designed. So much so that it ate the entire budget for the mod, which is why I want to give a big. Wait, they have a budget? Huh. Huh. Honestly, he's That's the kind of guy cool. I would hire to make a video game, considering how no how well he knows how to mess with these kinds of things. Yeah, true. You probably uh, need a lot of money to pay him. Yeah. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have that kind of money either. Yeah. At least not right now. Oh, especially not right now. Yeah. Even with my new job, I'm uh just basically saving up. Thanks to today's sponsor, Opera GX. Ah! This is your boring old browser. And this <laughs> is Opera GX. <laughs> just... And this 
is Opera GX with customizable mods to let you spice Oh up my your god, experience. you're going overkill like for this, this grunt. Thank you. Oh I don't know if you guys have heard of this little modding thing yet, but let me tell you it's pretty neato. There's some swoon mods out there, which include background music, keyboard sounds, opening and closing tabs, theme huh. colors, and even dedicated wallpapers. You cool. can even merge mods together Very and true. customize them how you like. Halo 3 can't even do that. Opera GX also has AI built right into the sidebar, which can be incredibly helpful for when you forget which C Sharp library has the file reader in it. And as oh. we all know, AI isn't just a productivity tool, it can also be a fairly entertaining distraction. Another great feature of Opera GX is the GX control panel. Most browsers consume your RAM like they're the flood, but Opera GX is built for performance, which is excellent for when you have 80 tabs open on the Elden Ring wiki because you're trying to make a new build. And I know switching browsers can be kind of a pain, especially when you have a lot of extensions that you rely on, but Opera GX is compatible with all Google Chrome extensions, so no need to worry. You can import your settings from your old browser and be up and running in no time. So what are you waiting for? Check out Opera GX today. Add hmm. over. I always listen to the ads mostly because I feel like they, since we're watching their stuff, I feel like they have a right to spill their stuff. Oh yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. Most definitely. Plus I do like watching their stuff and I do use Opera GX mostly because my computer Sorry. is terrible, and having something to optimize what's using my browsers and letting me actually game is nice. Yeah. So There's a reason I only play, like, smaller indie games, because my computer isn't that great. Did I mention that I taught yeah. Master Chief how to swim in this mod? Wait, what? He's honestly a natural. What? Oh, mommy, uh... <laughs> my god. <laughs> well, um... Anyways, I want to talk a little bit about the technical details and design of this mod. Okay, let and me see this. One of the this. biggest things I've learned from doing this project is that it was a bad idea. Oh! I'm not going to say that I utterly <laughs> failed and nothing works. In fact, this mod actually runs pretty well overall. But it mm. did require an enormous amount of tinkering to get it all to fit together. In my original plan for this project, I wanted to do a lot more intricate things with the ship battles, like having enemies swing across ropes to board your ship. That would be AI cool. around using cannons and turrets and all sorts of cool stuff but it just but, ended up being far too difficult to get it all working clean honestly yeah that seems like it could be a whole mess of just trying to get that yeah. work so yeah i can see that I mean, thing hmm? I, I would suggest they could have just made kind of like how they did with the uh enemy ship they could have just made a uh customized ship to fit the uh theme of halo instead of using like the uh the sailboats and stuff. And I mean, but then they would probably that. have to make their own models for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. They probably would have to make their mo own models and stuff, but probably would have ended up a little bit better. I guess, the but run. the but uh, trial and error is always kind of hard, oh, yeah. especially with video gaming and modding. Oh yeah, most definitely. I can understand the struggles with it all. I know that's why a lot of video games don't end up working out in the long run. I mean, nowadays or, people will just know. throw the video game out there even if they know it yeah. doesn't work. Like, there used to be even exactly. if games that are almost finished would basically get cut. But now they just throw them out mm -hmm. there. Like, look at uh, some of the stuff Warner Brothers is doing. Dear God. Yeah. Same thing with Pokemon, sadly. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the ship itself is sort of a nightmare of code on its own. There are yeah, hundreds of that. lines of code just dedicated to making it sail on a fixed path without freaking out and going straight into <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> this is an actual line of code that I wrote, and if that you asked awesome. me to explain it in a comment, I would simply run away screaming. <laughs> the 3DS project for the ship's model data is so dense oh, yeah, he got the model data from computer somewhere. halfway through this project yeah. just so it would stop lagging so hard while I was trying to work on it. In terms of complexity, it's similar to a scarab, but with just a lot more... Wow! 20... It's similar to a scarab and how complex it is? That's insane. That thing walks around and yeah. shoots. Cannons, three turrets, two deployable boat hogs, and four mongies in the hold that you can launch out of the side. Cool. It also has some climbable ropes so you can okay. haul yourself back on board if you fall in the water. Or spider monkey your way up the mast and find yourself a nice comfy spot to snipe from. And yes, these were a total pain in the ass to animate. 
This yeah. is absurd Seems like behavior. Him. Mr. Chief, face the camera. <laughs> Mr. Chief, face the camera. <laughs> was that a cat video or something? Yes, that was a cat video. Yeah, that's why I thought it was based on That was off like of a very popular one. It's very funny. But yeah. This I... is like the lady trying to get her cat to face the camera, and the cat got angry with her and just started attacking the lady. <laughs> As well as I did. Mm -hmm. Here's the plot twist, though. The original plan for this mod was almost the complete opposite of what it ended up actually being. Huh. There is quite an arc to it. The idea for this project was originally a big team battle PvP thing, with ships acting as bases. Yeah, that's what I thought this was going to be, and I can see where it would have gone there. But I'm guessing he expanded yeah. it into something else, or the other project didn't work out. I also wanted to have the ships be fully destructible and eventually sink if you blew enough. Ah, oh, there is actually a G mod for this. So he was trying to make that in uh, in Halo Three. The problem is Halo Three yeah. destructibleness is um. Them with the cannons. Not we actually um, got like eighty percent of the mod great. done with that oh. concept before running into issues. The first problem was the complexity of the ship itself. I got as far as breaking the ship down into 16 regions and designating areas for damage before oh. realizing that modeling multiple stages of destruction, both visual and physical, along with creating all the debris for broken planks, snapped ropes, and various other things, would take me the rest of my fucking life. Yeah, sure, that's I why you would... Three interns working on this night and day for months on end, it could have worked out. Honestly, if you had a whole team, you could probably get this done very easily. Oh, but yeah. he... But he doesn't. He's a single dude. But yeah, I'm just not that good of a modeler on my own to make that happen. The other major setback came in the form of netcode issues. While the ship works perfectly fine in campaign co-op, it has some desync issues in multiplayer that we couldn't solve. Funnily enough, though, the bug that caused this issue is actually present in the original Halo 3 Xbox release. Ah. It's almost imperceptible because of the scale of it. The issue basically hmm. boils down as follows. When you have localized physics on a moving vehicle, there is a position desync for objects that are on that vehicle. And the larger the vehicle is, the larger the desync gets. You can actually see this oh. desync on the elephant from Sand Trap, but it only moves objects a couple feet at most. On a vehicle as big as the ship in my mod, though, the desync is so bad it basically breaks the game, making up. So basically, he literally couldn't work on this because, quite literally, it's a in-game bug. Yeah, that he can't just Objects fix move hundreds of feet at a time. And so there was a long time where I just sat on this project, not sure what to do with it. Until one day, I decided to just pivot, switching my focus onto a co-op campaign mission of some kind. Originally, I wanted ah. to do some kind of open world, mm. randomly generated sort of thing where you have to dig up treasure and decipher clues. But this I is kind of the reason I'll probably never touch multiplayer if I'm ever making a video game. Yeah. Because multiplayer yeah, like has its has its own like metric ton issues. of problems. Yeah. Hey, Val, there was also issues with that. Primarily, that in order to have AI characters interact with the ships, mm -hmm. I would have to drastically rework how they functioned and remove the ability for players to drive them. After ah. considering options for a while, I came upon the simplest solution, though: Captain Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I always knew I'd be Captain Material. Instead, oh my god. Sail the ship, I would just have a story mission where Sergeant Johnson would sail the ship and give the players objectives and basically just lead them on a fun, linear mission. Not a joke. By making the mission linear, it also allowed me to handcraft each encounter in ways that would have not been easy to do with random generation. Yeah. It also allowed me to have more fun characterizations with the Marines sailing with you. Oh, they, they, they made actual working camps. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> God damn it. <coughs> no. <laughs> Probably Overall, didn't. Overall, I think this idea did work out really well in the end, even if it took a long time to get there, and was incredibly buggy as well, because shockingly, having battles fought on giant moving objects yeah. actually makes them way more prone to bugging out. And yeah, I can see that. And makes them a lot harder to debug as well. Oh, I... <laughs> Who could have seen this coming? Oh, Who could have oh. seen this? Ah! So section, let's discuss if, what if, it is, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions making such a thing. Yeah. 
the consequences and what of your own actions. Spot. Okay. I feel like the vibe I was imagining for this mod ended up spot on. It manages to be a coherent, simple story that's also goofy and non-serious fun. I which mean, I that once works. again have to thank the voice actors for because they did such an excellent job. As for the visuals of the mod, I think it also turned out pretty good. It's fairly close to the graphical standard that the Halo 3 campaign has, at least mostly. I am a competent 3D modeler, but I am far from an expert, and there are a few um <laughs> less than ideal meshes mixed in there. I, I did, mean, however, find myself if it really works, impressed with the detail painting tool for Halo 3. This is they why, are... if I ever make a game, I will literally not have it, like, be the super best looking. Like, the top kind of uh, designs I would go for is, like, PS2 graphics. Because that yeah. way you don't have to worry about things. They are hugely improved from the previous games, and creating dense foliage is a walk in the jungle, I'll be right back. I guess? Yeah. The main feature of this mod, though, I'm the ship listening. combat stuff, yeah, okay. turned out okay, I think. Oh. It definitely falls short of greatness, but I also think it doesn't overstay its welcome, either. I did at least manage to give each combat encounter a unique twist of some kind, so it never ends up being a slog. But I do wish I could have made it work a little better. One thing I do regret not being able to fix, though, is there is a slight jitter when the ship is moving. It's just one uh. of those mystery bugs of the Halo 3 engine that I couldn't solve. As for the normal combat encounters on the islands, I think the fight variety is fairly decent as well, but it does suffer a bit from the map I made. Since this is a bunch of small tropical islands that are very flat and densely forested, the areas lack verticality, and they're yeah. very difficult to take cover in. The dense you kind of have to keep moving around. Work good for taking cover in multiplayer since players can't see through it, but AI enemies are dirty wall hackers, and it yeah. doesn't really work that well for them. I did try to work around this, though, by giving the players multiple options for every fight. So you usually don't have to fight on the ground against enemies. You can usually choose to either fight from the boat or using vehicles. Makes the sense. failing in this bot, though, has to go to falling off the goddamn boat. There is, unfortunately, no way to detect if the player goes overboard and gets left behind. Ah, damn. So if that happens, your best bet is honestly just to reload a checkpoint. Unless, of course, you're playing in co-op, then you could just have someone deploy the boat hog and come pick you up. But yeah, I True. do wish there was a way for me to make this work better, but it's just kind of... The boat hog's <laughs> hopping so much. So pro tip of the day, don't fall off the boat, Ninehead. Now we are just about done here, but what would one of these videos be without a couple of highlights from the beta testing crew? Oh, Anti -son, son of a bitch is like machine completely typed out. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm dead already. I, everything job. just exploded. Good job. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Don't know why everything exploded. Green Knight is diligently testing the death mechanics. Of the yes, yeah. he is. He's saying, "Here, where Obviously you can not. die." Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Wait, so can I drive these ghosts on the water or no? Nah? Oh. Not those, the blue ones. <laughs> oh. oh! yeah. <laughs> You're right, I can. I wonder if you could jump onto the... Wait, can I jump oh, onto it? Oh, oh do the dun 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 You did it! <laughs> hey guys, I found something cool up here, look. Uh, oh uh, my god. <laughs> no, no. Here, have a bubble shield. Oh, bye. <laughs> Wait, I could jump on their boat. I want you to know that at some point it's gonna despawn and you're gonna fall to your death. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Where are the it really has become the Green Knight. I don't know what I could mean by that, but anyway. Boats back here. Oh, yeah, they're on the side. That's right. Hey, by the way, I'm on the beach. Please don't. Oh! oh you died. <laughs> <laughs> A fucking jackal sniper got me. God damn Oh, it. god damn. The legendary jackal snipers, yeah. <laughs> Can you get on the goddamn ship, please? <laughs> <laughs> Going, goddamn. This would probably be like Oh, they've got hornets. Without the hornet? It's actually not that bad if you use the missile plot on the boat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Speaking of which, fly me over, I'll hop on sure, it. Sure, I'll get you on that. We're landing on the boat, boys. I killed some dude. <laughs> he just barely got hit by it too. It was going specifically for him. I actually did. It was just like, yeah, you're dead. I'm just murdering everything. Oh wow. He is just incredibly unlucky. What is all the AI? 
They hated me specifically. Oh that was so funny to watch. Oh. <laughs> nice shot with the cannon, though. So they get is half. Oh, you know what? <laughs> it's like, why are these things blowing up? By the way, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, Jacob, wow. Jacob. Can you. Oh, <laughs> now they're just killing each other. Very normal for Halo oh, players to even in co-op missions. He's down, he's down! <laughs> get him, get him, get him! <laughs> the Blasphemist failed us. Get on the goddamn ship! Get on the goddamn ship! That's great. Oh, the cans actually... I mean, cannons back then were basically just big metal balls being launched at super fast speed with com explosions. Yeah. Oh. Slightly faster than me. Don't! Oh! <laughs> He's died six times, totally. I, I don't know how. And with that, I think we're ready to wrap this video up. I want to give a big thanks to all the people who made this project possible. As always, I've included some Easter eggs for my patrons, so happy hunting out there. And if you're interested in seeing some more stuff, check out the second channel. I'll be doing a developer commentary video playing through the mod and talking about how it works tomorrow. So thank you all for watching, and since you made it this far, here's a little spoiler for you. Uh -huh. Let's pop this sucker open and see what we got. Oh my gosh, oh my really? God. A physical copy of Cursed Halo 3 for the Nintendo Dreamcast. <laughs> oh my god, what the hell? Nintendo Dreamcast. Okay, oh my dude. God. <laughs> okay, my guy. Nintendo Dreamcast a little bit. That's so stupid, but it's so funny. That is. It's a... Uh... Oh my god. I don't even... I don't even know what to say about that. For the Nintendo Dreamcast, <laughs> of all things. <laughs> Even though it's supposed to be the Sega Dreamcast, but, you know. <laughs> of all things, why the Dreamcast? I don't know. It was one of those things that people love to say was ahead of its time because technology wasn't forward enough for it or something. I didn't have one of those, I know that. It's because they cost a lot of money. <laughs> but yeah. If you guys like what we're doing here, please tell me and we'll continue doing all the lovely reactions for you and maybe some new stuff because I'm hoping, hopefully, that I can use my money to create new and interesting content for you guys. Yep. So yeah, thank you all so much and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.